Inkscape 1.2, the most recent version, has officially been released, and last night I tried it out for the first time, almost instantly crashing it, multiple times. But once I figured out what I was doing to create that, it was smooth sailing. There's a lot of good upgrades, great features. There's some great videos out there already by some of the bigger YouTubers and the official Inkscape channel that actually walk through the line by line changes and upgrades. This is gonna be more of a test drive. I wanna play around with it. And I wanna show you some of the new features by repeating some of the stuff we've actually covered in this channel previously so we can compare the old version to the new. There is usually a visceral reaction to anything that's different. And I experienced it too for a moment, but once you realize all the hard work that the developers and designers put into making this software for us for free, you realize there's an overarching rhyme and reason to why they've done it the way they have. Here's the new welcome screen. I'm on the quick setup. I'm gonna just keep it on the defaults I have here. We'll go to time to draw and good old template A4. And we're in the new Inkscape. It's too big to see on my screen recorder. Resize it real quick. And the first thing you notice is the page border is white and you have your workspace or what they call the desk is now gray to me it's a lot easier to actually have the gray workspace like this because if you're working in white or white font you need that contrast to see what you're doing but if you hate it Inkscape makes it very easy to change things back up here on the new toolbar if you hover over the wrench edit properties of this document hit that you'll get your options desk is gray if you need it to go back to white just slide it back to white if you can get past the change itself there you have it it's actually more of an industry standard while we have this open for border i'm going to unselect always on top and you'll see how that comes into play later let's zoom in a bit and as i look around i love how the new toolbar is compacted and small if it's too small for you or for this video and you can't see it that well it's so easy to change right next to the wrench and the paper we were just on you can go to this wrench and screwdriver edit global inkscape preferences you'll see interface toolbars and now you can change on the fly the size of those tools see that I think I'll keep mine at 150% forever, just so it's easier for everyone to see what I'm clicking on during the tutorials. Looking at the toolbar itself at the very bottom, you'll see a new feature. Click on the create and edit document pages. You can now add multiple pages to your design. So if you're doing a media kit or a brochure or something, you can do everything you need to in Inkscape and export it in multiple pages so you don't have to take it into a different program to compile them all. So I wanna pause to say thank you and give a specific shout out to Martin Owens. I think he's the lead developer to put this feature in for us to use and we appreciate it. He also has a great YouTube channel where he chronicles each week what they're doing behind the scenes. So go check that out because maybe they will talk about this crash I caused on the first minute I tried Inkscape last night. I made a circle and I wanted to play around with the gradient because I heard there was a new gradient feature. I'll hit on linear gradient. And I always wonder why in the old version you had to click this little pencil thing. Now you can go to edit gradients and you get your bar that you're used to and you can move it around, you can add stops. But check this out. Now you have even more control of where you put those stops. You can move it here in this handle. You can be exact with it. Let's say this middle one I want it to be red and full opacity. I can drag it, sure. Or I can say put it at exactly 0.25 it will go to a quarter. If this is zero, this is a hundred. Now, if I'm doing a tutorial with you guys, I don't have to just say, eh, put it anywhere, <laughs> put it over here. We can say, put it at 0.25. And look at this, if I zoom in, I don't know if you can see it on the screen recorder, but this is a beautiful transition from yellow to red over here. It used to have a lot of lines, but look at it now. And maybe that's why I broke it so easily. Whatever you do, don't go to create and edit meshes and try to switch over on the fly to a mesh gradient. That's what was causing my crash. I'm afraid to do it now, I don't wanna start over, but maybe give it a try. If it's working, let me know in the comments. Maybe the patch came out quick. All right, let's move on. Let's go to some open space. And I saw a couple months ago when they did the preview of 1.2, how they changed the trace bitmap feature. Go up to path, 
Trace Bitmap. Trace Bitmap was already awesome. I've got three or four tutorials on it. What Trace Bitmap does is it takes an actual raster image and creates a vector for you. Before, you just entered in numbers and hoped you'd hit what you want. Watch this. You can just pull the slider and it's going to show you what type of vector you will produce. So that's too light. That's good over here. I picked an image with two different features to show you this might be good if I'm going to run with that or I can keep going darker and get this bird head together and hit apply look what it gave us this is a vector image we can change different colors we can go to edit paths by node and see all the nodes it just made off of that PNG if I hold shift I can grab the nodes I don't want these words here hit delete that is pretty impressive to me now look what it can do with a photograph I've got here a tiger in the snow trace bitmap single scan not too bad let's say we want to do multicolor detection mode colors for now let's just do 12 and i will stack the scans and hit apply check it out this is a vector tiger we made in five seconds look at that that's just 12 scans i'm going to revisit an easy one click setting tutorial we did where we took a hexagon and i want to see about create tiled clones clone create tiled clones p1 simple translation shift i've got the exclude for the column i'm doing one row 25 columns meaning i'm going to stack them in place scale we'll do negative one for the x and y rotation five degrees let's see what it does not bad okay remove let's try that with 40. create let's change the rotation to three create pretty sure this is what we did in that tutorial maybe it wasn't quite as tight as a spiral you can change the colors and everything if you want change it white create tile clone seems to be very similar let's stick with the hexagon theme but i want to try there's a new path effect that really fixed a workaround we had here's my hexagon let's turn it sideways there was a cool effect you could do with tiled clones but it took a lot of math and configuration to work it out and i saw from that preview video they made it very simple now go to path path effects and we'll add tiling I feel like someone literally read my mind and made it easier. We'll do 10 rows, five columns, add a little bit of gap. To make a long story short, it's very difficult to get hexagons to line up tiled out like you might see in a bathroom floor, but now it's easy. All you do is type in 50% offset and toggle this alternate button and it lines up almost automatically. You don't have to do any math if you don't want to hit edit paths by node. You can bring them together. I think because I oriented my hexagon sideways, if I pull the top one, it works the horizontal. Look at that. Now check this out. Let's make more of them. We'll do... 20 rows and 50. And okay, so no big deal, right? Well, look at this built in. We can change scale. We'll do it by 5%. Did that make it huge? I mean, that is, I spent, I did like a 20 minute video, edited down just to do this. That is just beautiful. What else can it do? Uniform. Wow. <laughs> just kidding. Random? Random's kind of cool. Now it looks more realistic, like a real bathroom. I'm gonna go back to regular. Can you change the direction? Oh, you can. Does anyone see the power in this? Let me know in the comments. If it's just me, that's all right. But think of the things you can do with this now. Let's go back to one more thing I wanted to try. Speaking of path effects, before we get to that, remember in the beginning how I said for the page border, I unselected always have on top. This is why when I drag it over the page border, I can see it's opaque. But if I go to the way the default was, or at least if you have always on top, it's confusing to me and maybe it's just me. But now I think is my gradient transparent? Did I do that right? It's full opacity, so maybe it's something I'll work on personally, but at least the option's right there to take the page border from always on top to not. And while we're here, I'm gonna make the page actually black. Move this aside and we'll try the rotate copies path effect. I'll grab the simplest circle, draw it open, and X out of the fill. I have my path effects tab open from before, rotate copies, and the default is six. Let's do a hundred. Edit paths by node, okay. It looks like it's nearly the same functionality. No difference there, but always appreciated. Let's make it more complicated. Let's put a gradient on the stroke itself. Path effects, rotate copies, 125 this time. Mm. The gradient bar is still on the object. That's kind of cool. Is that the same? Can't remember. 
It might be me, but this does seem to move pretty smooth. This might be a case where the path effect itself hasn't changed, but the underlying enhancements to Inkscape has made it smoother. Still learning the program, but that's what makes this fun. That's why I love to do these tutorials. So if you have questions of stuff that you want to see for Inkscape 1.2 or anything you'd like to do together, let me know in the comments and see you next time.